Okay, um, good evening everyone. Uh, I can't really see everybody in one like uh, view, so I'll like switch sides. Um, can you hear me if I speak like this? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so as you heard, we are doing like a special talk, a special series of talks this week uh, on something called the Gem Stack. And to kick off this evening, I thought I would give a lightning talk on what exactly the GenSec is. Okay, so uh, the next slide was a lot funnier when I put it in. Now I, I don't think it's that funny anymore. Um, but GenSec is not this kind of gem. I don't know who, <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you were here uh, last, this, this past weekend, uh, especially around the Marina Bay area on Saturday evening when the Standard Chartered Marathon was going on. It's also not this kind of gem. Um, it is something else. Okay, so let's get into it. So, so I, I'm, the way I'm going to do this is gem is, a, uh, is an acronym, so I'll just go through each of the letters and, and give a, like a really brief overview on, on what the, the letters mean and, and what that makes gem stack as a whole. So J is for JavaScript, and I've taken the uh, definition here from the JamStack website, um, abridged it a little bit. Uh, this means that dynamic programming during the request response cycle is handled by JavaScript running entirely on the client. Now what this means is this isn't something revolutionary in and of itself. Uh, given that this is a React meetup, this is something that we're used to already. Um, but, but basically it, it means that um, you, you program from, from the client. For example, when you do a form submission, you, uh, you, you don't make a, like a traditional, I guess, post request to a separate endpoint on the server. You can uh, submit that form entirely from, from the client. Uh, another example, this one's a bit more, I guess, uh, the ubiquitous. Data is fetched from the client. So when traditionally you might have a, a server that builds HTML pages with the data already rendered into the markup, uh, with JamStack you, you don't do that kind of thing. Rather you, you request data from uh, the client directly. Okay, A is for APIs. What this means is that it's, it's related to what I just said. Server-side processes uh, are abstracted into reusable APIs. So uh, as, as we have this uh, dynamic programming handled on the client, this means that we have kind of a separation between the front end and the back end. So what this means is that you have to, uh, the back end itself has to be exposed some way, and this is uh, in the form of, of reusable APIs. Um, and these APIs are reusable, meaning they're not necessarily bound to your particular client. There's, there's nothing about them that means that your web application has to be the only one that can use them. Uh, again, this, this is not unfamiliar to us as, as React developers. This is kind of modus operandi for us. Um, so finally, we have M, which is for markup. So this was something that was a little bit less obvious to me when I first uh, found out about GemStack. Uh, essentially, what this says is that templated markup should be pre-built at deploy time. So what 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 that that really means is um, typically these days you can achieve this by using something like a static site generator. Uh, what this does is it gives you uh, basically just HTML, JS, and CSS files, which you can put. And this, these are static. Uh, this is static content, right? No matter what functionality your application has, it's the same HTML, JS, and CSS um, being served. And this is because the dynamic part is handled on the client. So going back to the, the first, the, the, the J part and the APIs, um, you, you, the, the, the site code is the same for everyone, even if the functionality might be different and different people do different things. Um, 
what this also means is that we don't we don't build content at runtime. So traditionally, you might have a if you have a, a server rendered app, you you have you make a request to a server endpoint, and that will fetch data, uh, put that into some markup, and then send the whole markup down back to you. This is not what we do with Jamstack. Um, what what we do is the the, the content will reside somewhere else, and through the reusable APIs, you fetch and render it from the client. All right, so I had a question uh, where, when I got to this part, which was, uh, what about the, the routing aspect of it? So if you use something like Create React App, in its, in its vanilla form, um, it does not. You, you can you can set up different pages of your site, but ultimately it's still a pure single page application, which means there's only one HTML page, and um, in in your output from from your from your build command, you you still get one HTML page. So is that valid for the gem stack? And I couldn't really find a definitive answer, but I'm gonna go with. Uh, are on the side of no for this. Um, one of the things that you get if you use uh, modern static site generators is specifically this idea of declaring your pages in code, but have it have them generated out as discrete HTML pages. Uh, this is one of the, I guess, features of uh, something like Gatsby, and. Um, it's, it's also, it, it, it works really well with uh, putting everything behind a CDN because it helps with things like SEO and uh, page response times and things like that. So I'm, I'm going to go with, uh, if, if you have only client-side routing, that it's kind of not true Jamstack. OK, bonus letter. Uh, it's not the S in Jamstack, but uh, I'm going to touch on, on serverless as well because although this is not a like strictly defined part of Jamstack, it's kind of complementary. And the way it's complementary is because with this focus on having uh, a lot of stuff done client side, you might be wondering how do we do stuff which uh, traditionally needs to be not on the client, right? So for example, if you have secret things happening, like, like secret keys for, for particular things, um, which you can't do from the client because then you'd be exposing them, then how do you build a kind of Jamstack application with, with those requirements? So I, I guess you can get pretty close if you, use, um, this, if you use a serverless architecture, which basically means that you still, you still have something that's not on the client. You have a serverless function but you don't need to set up a full like server instance just just to do it um, so if you are not familiar with with serverless um, one of the most popular products is aws lambda which basically allows you to specify like a function which you can put behind a, a http endpoint uh, or not necessarily a yeah, http endpoint and uh, you don't set up like the server instance. It runs on a on a separate instance that's not managed by you. Uh, so so this is great because you don't necessarily need a full blown server instance to do this, and you don't you might not necessarily want to pay for when nothing's happening. Uh, and also serverless is trendy, so that's kind of cool. Um, if you use uh, a service like Netlify, which uh, Sean's going to talk about later. Uh, this is a kind of first-class functionality where you can you can write these functions in in your project, and Netlify will like bundle them and deploy them for you. All right, I I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So there you go. That's a really quick introduction to Jamstack. I hope that it if you didn't know what it was, then it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea for the rest of the talks. And uh, we would, we're not doing Q&A, so if you have questions, you can 
find me later. Thank you.